Hi, I'm Christina Porcelli from HB Plant High School in Tampa, Florida. I advise the Paw Prince Literary Magazine, the Pepo Plant News Magazine, phsnews.com, and Panther Yearbook. Today, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the elements of literary magazine design. We're going to be covering what exactly a literary magazine is and what does it mean to include. We're going to look at two great award-winning examples of this to really showcase that for you. Then you're going to have a chance to actually create your own so that you can practice what you've learned today. First and foremost, what is a literary magazine, or Lit Mag for short? It's simply a student publication that combines the verbal art or creative writing created at your school with the visual arts your students are creating as well. Now, with the internet and QR codes, it's no longer confined to just visual art. I've seen some, and you'll see an example a little bit later on, where they've used those QR codes to include videos as well as songs and other auditory art. Um, but today, since we're focusing on design, we're not gonna get too into that. What I wanted to show you, Joe, is, though, is what I mean by focusing on these arts. Here, we've got Roars and Whispers from Providence High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Every year, they make, hands down, one of my favorite literary magazines. It's just an example showing you taking a piece of writing by a student, in this case, it's a poem entitled In These Trenches, and coupling it together with a piece of art. And here is a colored pencil drawing entitled Harbinger. So we've got these two. The designer paired them together, utilizing the dead space in the piece of art to design the written component. We've got another example here. This time it's a short story called when we wanted to be astronauts paired together with a image, a digital image entitled isolation. This one has a direct connection, really driving the theme home where you've got the picture of an astronaut, the art, the story about an astronaut type thing. So that's got this really great verbal visual connection there. Now this is actually a jump spread situation. They did not have enough space on these two pages, so they had to go to two more to show that they go together. They included that a little snippet of that same piece of art here on this second spread. Now, both the examples I've showed you so far are just showing art and writing together, but that's not always going to be the case. You can also separate them. So here we've got Iliad from Clark Central High School in Athens, Georgia. Here they've got a spread that's just photography submitted by a student. Now they also have a spread that's just writing. Here we've got a satirical skit. And the only real design here is utilizing the pops of color in the names of the script so that you can see where each person is speaking. But that's the only design. And it works well, but you're not always going to have a piece of art for every writing or a piece of writing for every art. And that's okay. Now, going off of what you're going to have and not have, on the website, you can go to the evaluation tab and see the actual literary magazine critique. That would give you a great checklist to go through and make sure you're including everything you need in your lit mag. My original idea when I was planning this session was to simply take little snippets from there every time it was a design component and showcase those for you. But then I started diving really deep into this. Let me pull that up for you. Really into this critique guidebook and designs all over the place. And we just don't have enough time in our 10 to 15 minutes together here to really go over every individual one. So I'm gonna showcase to you what I think is the most important when I'm judging. But just real quick to let you know, this resource is here and it's a great way, like I said, treat it almost like a checklist, go through. And if your lit mag does what this says, you're on track to having a great lit mag. But just to scroll down and show you what you have here after our little introduction to evaluative services. But 
you've got design all in this. Right here, part one is called reader services, but so many of our design choices are reader services, so they're in there. Having that the elements work together in a creative way, showing the selection and how the design is um, in your visuals, that they're enhancing the design, et cetera. All of this has design interwoven in it, even though it's just reader services. Same thing here when I go, it's talking about the artwork is used to enhance design, et cetera. Now we can skip through writing. They actually don't have any design in there. But if we go through almost there, there's a whole design section that again would take me forever if I were to go through it individually with you. So I'm gonna talk about that biggest thing that you need to make sure you're doing in your literary magazines. Overall, that's having a consistent design look. That's actually in the reader services in themes. That's selecting a font, a font family, some type of design. And it's not that every spread is getting a different font. You're using that same look to show cohesion. I'm gonna get really into that in a moment. Then also, when you're selecting, make sure that there is a connection some way between your written art and your visual art. They need to go together. They need to be to where they're not fighting each other. They're supposed to be complementary, working together. One is not more important than the other. And that's gonna be really hard to design. Sometimes you have this massive piece of art to include or a really long story. So you have to find a way to make sure that one is not overwhelming the other. And like I said, the examples I'm about to show you are great at this. So um, I forgot, let me go back here. We've got two examples, like I said, that we're gonna be going over. One's from right here in Florida at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. The other is an example from Texas at the Hockaday School. Both of them are beautiful. So first, we're starting in Parkland. We've got artifacts and their theme obviously was tarot. They've started it right there from the cover. They made this cover look reminiscent of a tarot card. They chose this decorative font that looks like someone drew it themselves to go on maybe a more personalized tarot deck. It's a great look and this look is gonna carry through this entire publication beautifully. So. Here we have our title page. Also driving in that tarot idea. They've got a piece of digital art created by a student showing the tarot deck where they've got all their information. They're still utilizing these same fonts they introduced on the cover. You're gonna see those throughout the entire publication, really making it one cohesive unit. Here we've got our table of contents. The cover and the title page were both very dark with that black background. So here we're contrasting it. We've got that white background. We're using black now in our font where before it was the gold and white alternating on that back, black background. Now it's black and gold alternating on the white background. Still has a great look but we're lightening it up a little bit after having two heavier pages. We've got the section headers designed in the font from that cover. The folio is in that font and we've brought back that little border detail from the cover. Next, just like in a yearbook where you have that opening theme copy, you need to open the theme up for your readers. So here, they're really bringing in that idea of tarot in their writing. We're not talking about writing today, so I will skip over that, but I just wanted to show you what this was, because it is something that's gonna show up in that FSPA evaluation that you need to have, some type of introduction for your readers to your theme. Now we're gonna jump right into their content. They, like it was introduced on that 
table of contents, they have different sections. Also connected to that idea of tarot. Here we're going to be looking at material possessions. So they've got this section divider on the left, and they put it with a piece of student art on the right. Instead of having it very heavy and black, they've got that picture now to use that lightness and to balance out the darkness of the black background. Now, the spreads here are beautiful throughout this whole lit mag. I wish I could go through and talk about and analyze every single one of them, but I have to go fast because we've got another one to look at as well. But I wanted to just highlight some things for you here, some really beautiful choices they made to show the connection between the writing and the art throughout this whole literary magazine. So here we've got a mixed media piece and a poem. So they've got the mixed media piece taking up about the top two thirds of the spread. They've got the writing in the bottom third to show that these two are connected, that they complement each other. They're still using that same font. So you've got that consistency, that same almost like bubbly handwritten font. But this time they utilize a pull color. So it's no longer that black and gold or white and gold alternating that we've seen a couple times before. Now they have this teal color that they pulled from the art itself to show, hey, these go together. Even though the art is larger than the writing, it's still not overwhelming it. They're still complementing each other. Now here, they didn't use a pull color into the headline. They used this bar that they dropped behind the writing. That's a complementary color to the greens that you see in this image. They've also designed these about the same similar sizing which is a little different look from the cover. I mean, from the previous spread where it was two thirds and one thirds, but beautiful again, you can tell these two are complementing. One is not distracting from the other. Now here they've started a different technique that you're gonna see a couple of times as I start flipping through momentarily. Here, instead of a pull color or complementary color, they actually dropped the image into the headline itself. So you've got that almost tie-dye effect from this colored pencil piece right here in the headline, really connecting. Hey, these two things complement each other. They go together seamlessly. Going to keep going. This is a little bit different of a design look from what we've seen in the previous ones, but gorgeous. They've got some dead space in the mixed media piece that they've placed their poem into. And this one shows that verbal visual connection that I talked about previously. Headline, or excuse me, in this case it would be a title, not a headline. The title of the piece is The Kingdom of Undying Flowers. So what's in that mixed media piece? A flower. Looks beautiful together, complements each other gorgeously. Now this time they didn't use a pull color. They didn't use dropping the image in. They used a solid black for the title but still goes together beautifully, especially because there is so much black in this piece. Here's another example of them dropping it into the headline. And here I've got to start speeding up so I have time to show you some more. Here we've got dropping that image again into the title. Here we've got another pool color or complementary color. Really throughout this piece, we've got a couple different styles for those headlines but every one of them beautifully shows that connection. Here they even went a step above, opposed to dropping the picture into the headline. They took some of the eyes from that background image and used those in the background to add as a decorative element to the written component. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to our second. So I have a little bit of time to cover that before I talk to you about your assignment. So this is the Verado from the Hockaday School. Theirs is a little bit different of a look and approach, but still beautiful. So they're not starting with their theme from the get-go. We've got this image, but we don't know verbally what their theme is just yet. 
we don't get that until their opening theme spread where they have a little letter to their reader. We don't have time to read the whole thing, but I can tell you it mentions that they're talking about how people perceive the world. So they've got this piece here that they feel really connects with that idea. They've done a couple different techniques techniques here. First, they did that same thing that we saw in the previous one where they're dropping that image into it, but they also added the cutout here. If you look, that is this flower right here that's been cut out and placed as part of this headline. They also, this clock here, that's dropped into the back here and with the transparency really low. So it's making that connection. It's making a beautiful look, but not distracting from the actual piece of art here. We've got our table of contents, very clean, obviously following that grid beautifully. Now we've got our first spread. Here they have this beautiful photo of the sunrise. So why not just use full bleed photo? Blow the whole thing up, design your poem in the dead space of the photo. And here, instead of jarring with the white font or maybe being too hard to read in a black font, they pulled from this sunrise color and that's what their writing was done in. So it blends in beautifully to the piece of photography. Gonna go real quick. Here we've got this acrylic piece. It's kind of hard to see, but if you see in here in the background, all of this is the scan. So this is the background of the piece of art. So over here, they tried to color match that as much as possible. So it wasn't this jarring white background on the other side. They wanted this to feel as though it was one piece. Here they've also utilized some of that texture from the piece of art on the other side to make these two sides really fit together. Here's another example of taking a beautiful photo and blowing it up, full bleed and designing in the negative space that the artist left in that photo. Here, another kind of similar to the other one where they're actually color matching and texture matching this background on this drawing and then designing right on it to make it one cohesive piece. Flip through a little bit here. Now here's an example of what I showed you from the very beginning. It doesn't always have to be writing and art. It can sometimes be one or the other. So here we've got this beautiful photo. They did a full bleed on it and didn't pair it together with any writing and that's okay. Now we've got another one where we've jumped back. We've got our writing and our art. Just clicking through real quick so you can see some of these. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, sorry. I'm trying to get to one specific thing to show you that I mentioned earlier. Here we go. So here's a great example, like I said, with the internet and QR codes, we can really branch out. This one is talking about a film. She wanted to make a film about food uh, because she's a first generation immigrant. So we've got what's probably a still from that film she made, a headline, a blurb about the film. So we know what we're gonna see when we scan this QR. But if you scan the QR, it takes you to the film. Another great way that we can include all the various art mediums that our students participate in. Now, I know I went through that really fast and I still took longer than I meant to, I'm sorry. But where your teacher got the information to visit this video, there's also some information on Hold on, I have to get my mouse back over to the right screen. There we go. Um, on how you can create your own. We're actually gonna be meeting together on Thursday, April 22nd. Not sure of the time yet, but you'll get it when you get your registration information. We're gonna have a review, a little block of time together that you're gonna be able to join me in person this time. 
I'm going to be giving you some feedback. There are photographs and pieces of writing included for you and some directions. What you're going to do is try and design your own spread, similar to what you've seen throughout this video today. You're going to upload it using the information they've given. And during our session on Thursday, we're going to actually look at them. I'm going to provide you some feedback. We're going to have some time to round table and get some questions answered, all sorts of things. So I can't wait to see you then. Hopefully you learned a bunch. Bye.